Uh, good morning. It is 4.30 a.m. Oh, September 3rd. I believe it's Sunday. Um, so, I, uh, yeah, yesterday while at work, they, you know, uh, they're focusing a lot more energy on my brain now. Um, they tried to take me out at one point, too, while I was waiting for the train at a Union Square. Um... I mean, while at work, yeah, they were doing the most. And, of course, there's the job mobbing. Then, um... But the, the thing that gets me was, you know, uh... For whatever reason, I decided I wanted to watch a show on Netflix. I wanted to watch Netflix while I was, you know, on my commute home. So... There's a lot of heat and pressure that's being released from my cranium. It's probably for like the last 12 hours or more. There's been this concentration. It's almost like a downward, like focused, like cylinder of energy just going straight down through the cranium and heating up everything in the midbrain. I'm sure that if I was to get an MRI or, or, you know, when that day comes, if a, if a uh, medical examiner does, his, does their job thoroughly, they would see that, you know, the brain, my brain, is going to look a lot different from a normal healthy 34 year old's brain matter of fact if anything it might show that I, that I have the brain of probably someone much older based on all of the radiation that I've been absorbing but anyway All right, usually when this gets started, I try not to stop and I just let it just go ahead and keep going because the more, the more I let it come out, the less pressure I feel built up inside my brain. Plus it also helps that learning about what happens to the brain and the, the cells and the tissue of the brain, which releases gases in, in the skull, which in turn also creates pressure because it's building up inside the skull. Um, you know, to tell you the truth, I don't know if I have any intracranial um, fluid at all anymore because in order for this technology to really I guess work thoroughly they would have to drain a lot of that fluid out so then the lights the sensors won't be necessarily interfered with because you know light when it tries to go through water it scatters right so I'm sure there's probably like little hole, like nano holes or little millimeter holes that allows a lot of the intracranial fluid to drain out. So then 
the sensors, whether it's coming from a cell phone, whether it's coming from a cell tower, Wi-Fi router, or satellite, or drone, you know, all these sensors are built on several devices that are connected to the internet or the cloud. But yeah, while I was walking down the street, I'm watching this show, I'm looking at my phone. You know, I'm I'm very aware of my surroundings, so I'm not, I wasn't worried about bumping into anybody or nothing like that. But um, all that energy, whew, now it's as if they kind of slowed down, they tempered down the, en the amount of energy going into the brain. There's still a great deal of it. Like, I still feel his presence, but they probably turned down, they turned down the amp, um, I guess the intensity. I still feel the presence of it all over the brain. But um, I think right now, I guess while I'm recording or something, actually, no, I felt it kind of decrease a little bit earlier before I, well, I'll get there. So um, I'm walking down the street and I'm feeling the pressure build up on my head. So I'm just trying to like bypass that, I'm, you know, um, mentally um, and spiritually trying to configure my body to say release excess energy from my brain and usually when i say that and i command it i start to feel almost like a reverse like it's like like magnets have you know fields you know north and south a pole two polar ends right so when i would say release excess energy from my brain or release this pain from da 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 or whatever. <sighs> Instead of the negative energy that they're focusing go in, it actually does like a flip. Almost as if like, you know, well yeah, it literally like it flips poles. And then all of a sudden I start to feel the energy go out. So like even if it's going into the heart, if I say reverse or release excess energy that's going into my heart or a heart chakra or, you know, whatever. It kind of like does the does this flip and then it starts to flow back out. So then I get on the um get on the six train and um still trying to watch my show or whatever. But then I start to feel this extra, extra, you know, like, like buildup of energy in my solar plexus. So I get off, I, I get off at 14th Street because I'm going to transfer to the, the 404 Express. And as I'm standing on the platform, and you, you'll probably, you probably, I don't know, um, I doubt any real investigation will ever be done. Actually, no, let me not say that. It'll happen in its due time. I guess today or tomorrow may not be it, but in due time. Unless they do what they did uh, during that one uh, false flag event where apparently the security cameras on the platform were necessarily working that moment but uh, you know I realize a lot of times right before there's something about to happen a lot of times they you know something electronic ends up not working the moment before it happens something that normally works all of a sudden it just doesn't work the moment something happens but there was a camera there 
But then whatever reason, oh, the camera didn't get that. Come on, we already know what it is. But anyway, so I'm on the platform and I'm, and for whatever reason, I start feeling an intense, crazy, crazy intense, um, nauseated, like unbalanced, like feeling like it was almost to the point where I felt like I was probably about to pass out and like fall in the tracks or something. So what I did was I, I bent down and I just kind of like just waited because it was a familiar feeling. I've had this feeling before. I've had this feeling before. And I think that feeling is one of those feelings like when one of your energy, when one of your energy centers are completely disrupted, it throws off the flow of energy throughout your entire body. So if any one of your chakra points, if any one of your energy points ever gets completely out of balance, it throws off the natural flow of energy. So you would you would feel disoriented, weak, almost like you're about to die. So I had bent down, still felt myself kind of weak. Then um, that I had bent down for about like maybe 10, 15 seconds. And I said, no, I need to get lower to the ground. It wasn't necessarily the fact that I was worried I might, well, no, I did think about the possibility of falling in the tracks, but it was more along the lines that I realized if I'm standing, it's harder for the blood to really get to, um, well, not harder, but um, if they're, if they're, no, nah, they were definitely manipulating things. What I need to do is get lower to the ground. So I squatted down. I squatted down and I start to feel everything kind of like as if like things didn't have to travel as as much or as hard because I'm also thinking um, with this electromagnetic energy that they're using, they could probably cause things to not. Uh, well, not probably they can cause things to not. Well, they could cause like your blood circulation to decrease. They could probably, in you know, prohibit or disrupt the flow of blood to your brain. So many things. So I figured I'll just squat down to make the travel much easier. And then I start to feel myself slowly starting to come back. Then I had to take my right hand and do a little uh, chi uh, management. I placed it right over my solar plexus. And then I pulled, I pulled and pulled. And then I realized, of course, the energy is coming from my phone, my iPhone. Think about it like this, the the iPhone, or just about any, any smartphone, really. I mean, I definitely felt, um, energy come from my flip phone, a normal flip phone, which I, I really hate the fact that that flip phone had Bluetooth features. I was like, why does this flip phone have Bluetooth features? It's a flip phone. Anyway. So even like what I'm doing right now, I'm feeling energy coming from the iPhone. The electromagnetic field or radiation from the phones are depending on who you are because of course it's not going to be done to everyone but depending on who you are they'll basically increase the energy output of your phone or by you know whether they're having uh background apps running in your in your in your phone that you don't that you don't know of or you can't see. You know, and the only way you could probably see is if you go into like developer mode or something like that. Um, they can, um, they can use radio frequencies or um, 
what what is it vibrational vibrational frequencies that can communicate with the phone's microphone and then um probably just just be hell if anything probably running running background apps or changing features on your phone that you don't know of that forces the phone to output more radiation but basically it's all to increase the radiant potential to draw energy from to create a, a more powerful beam your phones are already resonating with you your phones your phones are connected to you just be mindful of that every single person that has a, a, a cell phone or a smartphone or whatever that thing is connected to you they, you ain't gotta believe it but it is <laughs> You ain't got to believe it, but it is. All you got to do, right hemisphere of the brain. And this is this is straight up right hemisphere of the brain. Just near, not so much by the frontal lobes, but just behind the frontal lobes. I think that's your primary motor cortex. You have a main connection or there's like this main energy um, sensor, this main uh, sensor or, or frequency that penetrates straight through at an angle. I think you would call, let me see, if that's 90, then that would be, uh, I, maybe you could say it's somewhere between, if 90 is straight up, then you could say maybe, maybe 45 degree angle, somewhere between, somewhere between like, I say 65. Well, maybe somewhere between like 70 and 45 degree angle. It comes in at an angle like this. Not only that, you will feel, you can feel the heat. You can feel the thermal effects of the the energy being carried by um, with the frequency. And you can also feel the vibration. Use your right hand because your right hand is a lot more sensitive. Uh, than your left hand. And I think it, I'm not exactly sure, but for whatever reason, I think um, in the Eastern world, how they interpret energy and um, energy output from the body, I think it has something to do with more of that yin and yang or, or positive and negative um, aspects. I'm not entirely sure because I can do a lot more with my right hand than my left, but I don't, I don't even think it's really, I could do more with my right hand. It's more along the lines that like, the right hand does different things than the left can, left hand can. Like, I feel like I can pull so much more energy with my right hand. So like, even like right now, they have a beam concentrated on my solar plexus and it's coming out from like the bottom portion of my iPhone SE. Actually, let me see if I, yeah, it's mostly coming from the bottom portion of the phone. Oh, but now that, now it feels like that, right. You know what? Cause it's beam steering. Exactly. A phased array antenna. They're basically using the phased array antennas to steer the radiation into your energy points. They're gonna, a lot of people are gonna say, oh, that's impossible. Psst. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Where there's a will, there's a way. And trust me, there are targeted individuals in several countries around the world who are all complaining of the same thing. And they're all learning the same thing. Some more than others. Me, I, 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 I believe that I probably figured out a lot more in a faster time than many, but this is not a comparison or a race. This is what I am naturally able to do and understand compared to what someone else is naturally able to do and understand. Um, but I digress. So yeah, uh, after I started to feel myself um, get my bearings back. You know, I stood up. 
And, you know, the, the, the train comes. I'm really hoping I can get a seat because I'm like, I think standing up is going to be so hard for me. But I eventually I get a seat. So I'm like, oh. And I just go ahead and I just, on, on the way, on the way, riding uptown, I just go ahead and I just continue to try to watch my show and focus on expelling energy. Right now they, well, about 10 seconds ago, they just created a new beam and directed it uh, towards my heart. But then my right hand, I kind of, it's like I've been holding a frequency that's been connected to my solar plexus. So then when I felt the, the energy build up on my, my heart, I moved my right hand over. And then that frequency just kind of, it just like did this little, like a magnetic whipping effect and then it attached to my hand. So like it's like the beam came straight because, you know, I'm holding the phone like this. So the beam came straight. And my hand was over here. But once I moved my hand closer this way, the beam did like this, like it just, like it just attached itself to my hand. So it's like, as long as I keep this going, most of the energy that they're attaching to my body is going to um, become magnetized to my hand. Because it's almost as if like I created a, a, a magnet with my hand for the energy. Well, we are magnetic actually. So if I wanted to draw energy away from my energy centers, I have to create a new energy that can probably pull it even more. And it's, and it's interesting because all I'm doing is, is basically like, I just, I just tense my hand and by tensing the hand, it's like as if like it increases the the magnetism. But not only does intensing up my hand increase the magnetism, but it also feels like it increases the expelling energy output as well. Um, I got back into creating um, a portable groundings and um, yeah, between the last two, two, three days that I, I wore them to work, I remembered the difference of when, like I remember the difference now of when I have them on me and then when I don't have them. And yeah, I was being, I was, that was a really good experiment because um, I went several weeks without wearing a, a portable grounding piece. Um, look up Tony Pentalaresco um, or Herbs Plus Beadworks. And um, I think the, uh, I think the video is called, um, uh, not grounding yourself, but that's, that's, that's another one I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you. But I think it was called, um, I guess protecting yourself from radio frequencies or something like that. I forgot. But anyway, um, so yeah, I, lo I, I definitely need to be having one on me at all times to at least try to ground out some of the energy. So I'm just not walking around building up a charge all day long, you know, at least whew, like try to like ground some of it out of my body. But anyway, um, so There's a lot of people in this city that ha that worship the beast. And I think we all ought to know that the beast is artificial intelligence. That is the beast. 
The beast is artificial intelligence. What the artificial intelligence will give rise to after this, that's the part that everyone's going to wish that they never gave into this. Artificial intelligence in some circles is very, it's, you know, it can be very beneficial. But the problem is, at the very root or the foundation of many of these artificial intelligences is there is someone who is a part of a very dark circle of people or a group or society of people who is taking that very same information, that very same software, hardware, and they are weaponizing it all for the sake of power, control, and the fulfillment of desires. Just about everything that's technologically being, well, that's being made as far as technology for people with disabilities, impairments, and things, every single one of those things are being used and weaponized against very specific people. And the people that they weaponize it against are those who are naturally not conformist, those who are thinkers, those who are um, people who have moral values, people who um, actually fear God and not man, those who actually have conviction, those who like to hold other people accountable for their actions. Those are the type of people that are being sought after. Pay attention. Pay attention to the type of people you see around that's suffering. Pay attention to the people that you see who look like they're suffering in life. Pay attention to them. The people who look like they're suffering in life, trust and believe, not everything was all their fault. From the homeless people to drug addicts to people, you know, in the streets. There are people suffering who it wasn't all their fault, but they were socially engineered into that life. They were socially engineered. They were steered. Because, I mean, if you don't know about this technology, then obviously you're not going to know what to look for. You're not going to know what to feel, what to sense. But once you become aware of it, I mean, this is one of the reasons why they're destroying my brain a lot more than my heart, because what the handlers continue to repeat is you're not supposed to know about technology. You were supposed to be a police officer. Whew. He wasn't supposed to know about technology. That's all I keep hearing. He wasn't supposed to know about technology. Don't worry. He's not going to be here for long. Whew. Remember, it's, it's four people under the age of 35. Two men, two women. They're operating right here in New York City. Most likely they got a base somewhere. They're operating They're operating somewhere out here in the Bronx. My brain mapping was done, I think my brain mapping was done at 1490 Boone Avenue. Because I wasn't experiencing most of this overt harassment until I moved into that building in September 2019. And it's and it's crazy because there's been it was so many times where I was trying to like and I remember telling this story uh in earlier videos where I was like there was so many times where I was telling telling the guy and it was supposed to be a lottery apartment. It was supposed to be a, a much more affordable apartment than what I was paying for it. <sighs> I was telling the guy, "No, I don't think I could afford it. It's too much. It's not really what I'm looking for." He's like, "Oh, but it's 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 a beautiful apartment. It's it's really nice. It, it's a brand new da 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 da. He kept pushing me, edging me on, and I'm like, eh. you know. And then I'm and then I'm thinking, 
it would it would be nice to have my own apartment, even though it is kind of far from my mom. And that was the other thing. That was my instinct. My instincts was like, nah, this apartment is too far from my mother because she she lived in Brooklyn, and I'm living, and I would be living in the Bronx, <laughs> which is crazy because the same thing ended up happening again uh, because my girlfriend has family up here, so she didn't want to leave the Bronx. So I was like, okay, uh, all right, I guess I'm just gonna work this out again, you know. So, but now I, I kind of realize now that um, that guy who was um, edging me on to take this apartment, and he was, and he was hitting on me too. Yeah, he tried to gave me his phone number and I posted and everything. But um, yeah. Uh, But yeah, uh, pay attention. Don't don't be so quick to uh, judge, or rather, don't physically show discomfort or or disrespect to anyone until they give you until they show you that they not they don't deserve your respect. Whatever you think. That's always what it is. It's a thought at that moment. It's a thought. A thought is nothing until you put forth the energy to that thought and then you start to act out or act towards that thought. What they're doing with this technology is they're trying to take away your ability to just think. If you think anything that they don't want you to think, they're going to do stuff to you. You know, there's been so many celebrities and just philosophers and, and other people that uh, living or currently or, or past that has always been warning us of, you know, um, think while you still can. And that's literally been going over our heads over and over and over again. And it's not until you be it's not until you realize that you're being targeted by a secret society, the deep state or a secret government or whatever. It's not until you realize that you're being targeted. That you realize exactly what that statement meant, because if you get V2K, then you really learn that they're trying to take away your ability to think. Synthetic telepathy is a complete mockery of God. It's a complete disrespect to God and everything that he has, you know, done or created on this planet for humanity. This is why, and you know, the, the other thing is, luckily we know there's nothing new under this sun. There's been definitely other human beings in the past, you know, even uh, civilizations that were more advanced than ours, probably more intelligent than ours, that, um, that have been trying to perfect these, these instruments and tools and whatnot. But you know what happens? When they get too powerful for the rest of humanity to basically try to temper or manage or control God then sends his angels or his holy ones to come down and do things to work in favor for the righteous and then God will also cause certain things like catastrophic events that all occur that can literally wipe out entire civilizations, entire populations, almost to ruins. That's why we have archaeologists. <laughs> because it's the archaeologists are the ones who keep digging up the past. And then next thing you know, 
we have these new hosted spirits that's now learning the weapons of the past and then trying to advance everything they've done. And then now we're just basically going to see the same thing happen again. You know, there's always a civilization that comes after a one that was destroyed and then they dig up the artifacts of that civilization. Then they try to take whatever they had with their new advanced, you know, uh, tools and they try to advance whatever was done in the past. And then usually what happens after that, once they perfect the tool, then the earth or humanity resets again. <sighs> Why? Because the world can't be all evil. It always has to be balanced. And whenever, whenever, anytime one thing's, one thing becomes too much, it has to be balanced. There's always going to ha- there's always going to be a balance between good and evil. Just like how in the Bible it mentions how for like a thousand years you know, for like a thousand years evil, you know, um the devil will reign and then after his thousand years um like the Christ Christ will reign or the Christ consciousness will reign. So there's always going to be that up and down, up and down. There's always going to be an up and down. Right now, right now we're looking at, you know, the devil reigning. The devil is reigning over the earth right now. And the other fallen ones and the evil spirits that dwell here on the earth, there they have taken hosts and slaves of many using these uh, devices. And trust and believe, a lot of these devices definitely have sigils and and symbols and things that represent a lot of occult, dark magic stuff. They are definitely putting... Like, paganism is definitely in technology. Best believe that. Best believe that. If you're not, if you don't, if you're not sure and you think I'm, you think I'm bugging, look up techno paganism. That's it. Look up techno paganism and you'll see. That's why I find it so interesting. Any of these people out here who's probably gang stalking and they're walking around with Jesus tattoos or Jesus pieces or they, they talk about God and whatnot, but they're working with this gang stalking secret society. No, you are not doing your soul a service. You are not doing your soul a service. Because what you are doing, you are actually going against God. You are actually helping with the with the uh the advancement or the um promoting of the the rise of the second beast to come. The artificial intelligence is the first beast. The second beast is going to be far worse than the artificial intelligence. If anything, the second beast may end up becoming a more powerful AI or something or or AI that basically, I don't know. I don't know what that's going to look like. I'd have to go back to Revelations. But um, when you think about like a a beast with, what was it? Uh, Seven heads, ten horns. Hell. Look at some of the world's most uh, powerful, I guess, weapons companies, um, neuroscience companies, um, quantum computer companies, all these different companies. They're all pushing and pushing and pushing for transhumanism. Transhumanism basically taking the natural human being and augmentating, augment, augmentating it so that it's not only organic, but it's also partially inorganic because it will be able to communicate and work with electronic devices. So just know this. The moment they decided to actually work with the secret society, they just told God that 
I don't need my soul anymore. They did, they promised me that I could live a long life. So I don't need my soul anymore. That's just, that's literally what they're saying. That's literally what they're telling God. I don't need my soul anymore. They're promising me a long life. Hell, they're even 